My name is Jonathan Watson. I am 16 years old. I'm turning 17 next month, and I'm from Wald Lake, Michigan. What's it been like growing up with a rare disease? Uh, one's a little hard to answer because I don't really know what it's like not having the disease. As far as I can tell, really the only difference is just you have to go to the hospital sometimes and that you have to go through more than everyone else, like more pain, more procedures, but you still have you still have your family, so it's not like your family suddenly changes. Relationships don't change like that. You still have your family. You still have, like, school, your life, everything like that. That doesn't really change. It's just every now and then you have to go to the hospital. In terms of at school, like, recess and my peers and stuff in elementary school, um, I think I was still able to keep up with most people, so... It was just when it came to like, I don't know, organized sports. So if I wanted to play soccer with a bunch of people at school, I would obviously be the worst one. I'd be the slowest, the most, um, like, I'd fumble the most, but man, I mean, partly because of my disease and I couldn't play for too long because my oxygen saturation would drop after like 30 minutes. So there's that, but it's not that I couldn't do it. It's not that I couldn't play soccer. It's not that I couldn't do sports. I just couldn't do them for long, as long as everyone else and as good as everyone else. I had a lot of issues when I was a lot younger. Usually, I, the tests that I do, like the MRIs and stuff, are every year. So there are like months and weeks of the year where I go to the hospital more often than just every three weeks. And my doctors, their appointments are usually yearly too. So again, there's like weeks where I see go to the hospital twice in a row, but the minimum I go to the hospital is every three weeks because of blood transfusions. I hope my health gets better in the future because right now it's, eh. Oh, I was actually a, I was actually a bit better off health-wise a few years ago than I am now, but that's mainly because of a lot of other issues that's been cropping up, like me being allergic to medicines and all that. I started taking science classes in high school, like AP Chemistry, Honors Bio, Honors Chemistry, all that. Really, those are all pretty interesting. Honors. Honors physics was like really fun because I really liked math. I really like math. Um, I'm in AP Calc right now, but math and science, they were very interesting. And then that kind of turned into medicine because of my disease, because it was first biology that interested in me. And the, sci the rest of science just came from that. So it's a lot of stuff kind of added together. Usually I go to my mom first, because uh, I know she doesn't know everything, but usually she either has the answer or can find the answer for me. Um, I know there's like Facebook, like I'm in the Facebook support group, but I know there's support groups like that, and I know there's websites and all that. I do go on there sometimes to answer other people's questions. Like when they ask the Facebook group, um, does anyone else have this issue? Or has anyone else noticed this? I'll be like, yeah, or no, or um, I don't know, what other, what treatments are there for something? I don't know all the answers, but I'll say what I know and say that that's what I know. Hi, I'm Alejandra Watson, and I'm from Mexico City originally. I had a very difficult pregnancy first. Um, a very high-risk pregnancy. Jonathan was about to born when I was 20 weeks into my pregnancy. And they, got, they were able to stop the contractions and everything. But I stayed a few weeks in the hospital, and then I was having some bleedings. 
and everything was a little bit crazy, but uh, he was able to hold on till the week 37. When he was born, the only problem that he had was a little bit of his sugar levels were a little bit out of the normal range, but he was very okay. So I fed him and everything went back to normal. But six hours after they came and they told me that they put him in ICU because he was uh, he was jaundiced. And two months later, they came back and they told me that he had a pyrobarkinase deficiency. I really didn't even know what was that. I didn't even know how to pronounce it back then. Um, it, it, it was difficult and scary. Uh, I guess all parents will be scared when we don't know. We are fearful for what we don't know. And that was one of my biggest scares in life. Jonathan as a kid was, it was a very funny kid, very busy kid and very smart. Um, his first months and years of life were rough because we didn't know what, how to take care of him with the parabikinase deficiency. It was not a lot of information, but, but Jonathan was always happy. He was always fun. He was always running and climbing and not sleeping. <laughs> I couldn't really understand what was parabacinase deficiency other than the structures of the red blood cells. But uh, to me, though, that conversation with the doctor in that moment, it wasn't enough. So I went home, I grieved for a little bit. For me, grieving is like to cry, to crumble and get down to the floor and feel that I'm nothing and the whole world is about to end. And the next day I get up and I say, okay, it's time to work. And I decided that that day that I was going to find out what was part of our efficiency, and I was not going to let my son die. And it didn't matter what outcome or what the doctor told me, it was not going to happen. The only thing you can really do is keep practicing Try not to compare yourself to others because you are at a disadvantage while everyone else is not. So comparing yourself, your performance to another, to a normal person physically is like comparing an 80-year-old man's performance versus a 60-year-old. Like obviously one's at a disadvantage compared to the other, age, time. So it's not a good comparison unless they also had the same disease. So I'd have to say, keep practicing. You can overcome that disadvantage. It is possible, 100%. And don't compare yourself to people that are not good comparisons. They're not good comparison points, not accurate. For a parent, you know, everything is balanced. With a child like me, balancing is harder you may need to give more attention to the child with the disease that is life-threatening, but not too much that it spoils them. And you still need to give attention to any other kids that you have because they, are, they also will have their own issues. It's kind of like how you do with any child. It's just you have to be more careful when someone has PKD. And don't, don't leave them out of their health. Like when you're at the doctors, most kids probably just want to like play, do something else. They just want to not be there. Um, but at one point, you're not going to be in their appointments with them. At some point, they're going to have to be there on their own paying attention and actually knowing what they're talking about. It's. Uh, you can leave that for later, but it's better to start early. 